Does this sound familiar to you? You found a new course. You purchased it. You are excited. Then you watch the whole thing. Later, you open a text editor. You're trying to just code one line, but your brain just goes blank entirely. Where did my knowledge go? Does that sound familiar? Yep. Let me tell you, this is very common, and you have been entered the tutorial hell. Fortunately, in this video, I am going to tell you some of the things that I've learned when I was learning how to program that could help you to get out of that tutorial hell and really help you to learn more effectively and efficiently when it comes to learning. Online. Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May, and I am a software engineer in New York City. If you are interested in the contents that I created in this channel, maybe consider subscribing. I love sharing my perspective when I'm living in the tech world, and I love making contents that are related to that. When it comes to watching tutorials, especially watching tutorials. After tutorials, it is really hard to actually learn how to problem solve. Tutorials are gonna stop you to actually learning from your hands-on experiences. Let me give you an example. Think of the time when you learn how to swim, when you learn how to bike. Those experiences you cannot just learn from watching someone else do it. Like you have to actually learn it on your own because it creates that type of muscle memory. And it's the same way as learning how to program. So if you are watching a lot of tutorials one after another, you're never actually getting that knowledge to apply on your own. And problem solve on your own. So in today's video, let's talk about the things that you should do instead. Skill number one is that you have to start small, not big. And one of the reason why is because when you're trying to learn everything at once, you get very overwhelmed. You might think that you can watch one tutorial after another, one after another, but the fact is, all these knowledge. That you've watched, they're just not gonna go through everything into your head. Learning requires willpower, and any type of willpower is like battery. It's gonna run out. It needs to charge every day. Same as learning anything in life. You need to get that motivation, and you need to be consistent. And in order to be consistent, you need that willpower, and it's gonna burn out if you don't charge. This is why you have to start small. When you're trying to learn to program, don't try to learn all at once. Don't think about I have to build the next Facebook. I have to build the most creative and exciting application. Think of I'm just gonna write one line of code. I'm just gonna try to code ten minutes every day. But that beginning of thinking or tricking your brain to think that you're just gonna start. Very very small. I'm just gonna open the text editor. I'm just gonna write one code. I'm just gonna set this variable. I'm gonna create this function. Like step by step, you're gonna slowly build up the whole application. So it is really important to keep in mind that you have to think small. Number two is repetition isn't always work. I know you all heard about this quote: "Practice makes perfect." From Tony Robbins, I know that might sound right, but you gotta make sure that you are practicing the right thing in order to make it perfect. If you keep on practicing the wrong path, or if you keep on practicing the wrong habit, that's not gonna lead you to profession, and you probably will develop the wrong habits of doing certain things. I wanted to share with you this mastery cycle that I've learned recently. Which is starting with try and apply, and then review and reflect, and lastly improve and evaluate. And this cycle helps you to take a step back and really look into how you should practice and how you should be mindfully practicing 
when it comes to learning how to program. Instead of learning and practicing the same thing over and over and over, you need to learn one thing and pause and think about how you could apply that knowledge into programming. And then you need to review and reflect. You need to think about what you could have improved in this line of code. How could you improve it? And how you should code better in terms of structures, in terms of architecture, in terms of how you can architect your code base. Lastly, try to pick one thing and slowly improve over time. And you wanted to repeat this mastery cycle over and over and over instead of repeating without improving or without improving in mind. Number three, you gotta stop. You gotta stop watching all the time. You gotta stop watching one video after another. You gotta code it out. We tend to fast forward all these knowledge because you get so excited of watching one video after another. However, you gotta make sure that after you watch a few of the videos, you need to take a pause. It's not like any of those Netflix shows that you could just binge watch the whole thing. You actually need to absorb knowledge. The idea is that you have to learn to problem solve on your own, right? Watching somebody solve the problem is not exactly the same as solving it on your own. This is the gap and this is why you get stuck because whenever you get stuck to try to program something, you'll realize that you did not really grasp that information. You didn't really get that knowledge. What you need to do instead is whenever you got stuck, you need to go back to the resource, watch the video again, and learn and try to fill out those knowledge gaps. And this is very important. So next time when you get stuck, take a step back, stop watching, try to code it out first. Because without coding your first line of code, you'll never know where your knowledge gap is. Lastly, I wanted to share my experience and my story, how I got improved over time. Before I even share this, I want to talk to you about an example of me going to the gym. When I first go into the gym, I only can lift like 10 pounds. Like literally, I was like the weakest person at the gym. But over time, because I'm consistently going back to the gym, I have this strategy, I'm gonna practice different muscle groups and I keep going back day after day. I started to be able to lift a lot more. And now I feel way more confident and now I feel way more strong on my own. And the reason that I'm telling you this is because programming is just as the same as weightlifting in a very magical way that you have to practice problem solving. And the only way that you could practice problem solving, like to train those muscles, is by doing it every day. Is like how I would go to the gym every day. This is why I practice what I practice. I use data structures and algorithms to help me to practice problem solving. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can practice problem solving. You don't necessarily need to do all these boring algorithm practice, but you gotta make sure that you're practicing how to problem solve. There's a ton of resources out there that help you to learn and help you to practice how to problem solve without doing algorithms and data structures. However, I would highly recommend doing that just to help you to get better at problem solve. Also practicing data structures and algorithms helps you to get better at interviewing. Obviously, there's other ways that I mentioned in the past, which is, I think, cohorts or other games that you could use or you could have leveraged to really help you to problem solve every day. And even just your day-to-day -day activity, try to think a little bit further, like how do I solve this problem? And then try to reflect and how do I solve this problem better, right? So these are all different ways that you could implement to help you to improve and help you to practice your problem solving skills. That might work 100% for some of you, but this is what I did and this is what I've learned that helped me. I hope this will help you as well. Please leave comments down below and let me know if you try out these methods. And make sure to check out my videos about how to get hired after Udemy 
if you also purchase some Udemy courses and you are wondering how exactly you can leverage that to help you to get a job. Until next time, I will talk to you very, very soon and stay safe. Adios.